Hi everyone, this is Teo from parkablocks.com. Welcome to another watercolor video. Today's video is for beginners. I'm going to talk about how you can make sense of the first watercolor box set that you buy and talk about the colors, talk about mixtures, and if you want to add additional colors to your box set, what are some things you should take note of. And in a smaller portion of this video, I'm going to very quickly review the Aqua Mini set from Senelia, which is this. All right, so let's talk about this set first. There are only eight colors. This is unlike other box set, which usually come with 12 colors. So this particular set has very limited mixing well. So this is definitely uh, better in the sense that this has white backing. So when you mix color on white backing, you can see the color mixture uh, clearer. But here it's transparent and this white area here is quite small. So this particular design, this metal box, I do not like it very much. But the paint, the quality of the paint, this is quite high quality. For some watercolor boxes, they come with a brush and usually it's not very high quality brush so I usually do not use them. So let me put that away. And the first thing that I do usually is to swatch out the colors. Some people like to swatch out the colors on a small card that they can easily bring along so that they can refer to in the future. This is especially helpful if you have a lot more colors, like if you have 24 colors, some of the colors, the names are a bit difficult to remember. And also if you want the pigment information, you can also write down on the card. For me, I like to swatch out my colors on the first page of my sketchbook so that it's always there. I do not have to bring a separate card around. All right, let's swatch out all the colors. I'm going to fast forward this section. Swatching out colors is a very quick way to let you see the characteristics of individual colors. For example, when I look at the color swatches right now, I can tell straight away which colors are transparent, which are not, which are granulating and have extra textures, which colors do not granulate. So this is a quick way to get a sense of individual colors. And now let's take a look at the colors one by one. This primary yellow looks like it's transparent to me. It uses PY74. This is the pigment information. If you want to know more info about the pigment that is used, I actually have another video that talks specifically about how you can read this kind of information. I'll put that link in the video description below. So for primary yellow, it looks like this is a warm version of yellow. I kind of like this. I like this yellow. This is French vermilion. PR242. This looks like it's transparent, but on the box here, you see this black square here. This means that it's not transparent, but when I actually swatch out the colors, um, it looks like it's transparent. This is Scenarius Blue, PB15 colon 3. Now in other brands, this pigment coat is used um, to create a phthalo blue. So for this particular brand, they name this blue a bit differently. And in addition to this pigment, they also have another pigment, PW4. So this is a white added to this phthalo blue to give this sky blue color. This is a bit toned down compared to the actual phthalo blue. So two two pigments make, make up one color here. This is French Ultramarine Blue PB29 with PV15, that's a violet. So this is also a two pigment color. The interesting thing about this French Ultramarine is it doesn't appear to be as granulating compared to other brands. Here we have Thalo Green Light PG7 PB15 colon 3. So this is a mixture of a green and a blue. And this green looks like a yellow, yellow blue green to me, a very bright yellow blue green. 
This is Sap Green, a warmer version of green. It uses PB29, PY153. And notice that this PB29 and this PB29, they are the same. So you can actually mix this green with French Ultramarine and this PY153, a yellow. This is Burnt Umber, PBR7. There are many other versions of Earth Tones with the same pigment coat. They look a bit different and they behave a bit differently as well. This is Paints Grey. It's made out of three pigments. So uh, it's a bit difficult to achieve this. This is Paints Grey. This is made up of three different pigments, PV19, PB15, colon 1, and PBK7, that's uh, black. Knowing the pigments that are used to create the color can be quite useful because some companies, they like to name their colors differently. For example, Sennelier, they name this blue Sennelier's blue. Most other companies name this Thalo blue, and there's one company that names this Peacock blue. The thing is, when you want to switch uh, to a different company to use their paints, but you still want to use that same color, you just have to look for the pigment code that is offered by that company and sort of ignore the name. Some pigments can be used to create different versions of colors. For example, PBR7 can be used to create burnt umber, can be used to create raw umber, raw sienna, and burnt sienna. When it comes to adding additional colors to the selection, I usually recommend adding primary colors that would be yellow, red, and blue because with primary colors, you can mix sec secondary colors like this. But if you add secondary colors like this, like a green, you will not be able to get primary colors. So if you add more primary colors, your palette will be more versatile. You can add two versions of yellow, two versions of red, there are already two versions of blue. Maybe you want it to be even more versatile. You can add another blue as well. When it comes to adding secondary colors like orange, green, and purple, I like to add a color that can be mixed with existing primary colors that I have. For example, here with sap green, it's made out of PB29. French ultramarine is also PB29. Here there is an additional PY153. So if I actually have this yellow, I can use that yellow and mix with ultramarine to get sap green. But why would I want to do that? I want to do that because the more pigments you use to create the mixture, the more likely it is going to turn into a muddy, lifeless color. When you have a secondary color that's made of existing colors, you can add the existing colors to move it towards that side of the color but if you introduce a different color then sometimes it's a bit difficult to predict how the color will react how the color will turn out unless of course if you swatch it out again so that's just some very basic recommendations on colors that you can add of course the best way to find out what colors to add is to create a color chart or color wheel this color chart is created with Mission Go watercolors. By the way, if you want to learn how to create a color chart like this, you can visit the link in the video description below. I have a tutorial on creating color charts. So with a color chart like this, you can very quickly get a sense of what colors are lacking in your color palette. So here I see some yellows, a lot of orange, a lot of variations of red. So yellow, orange, and reds, they are definitely not lacking on uh, in this color palette. But when it comes to blues and greens, I have a very limited um, selection. So maybe I want to add an additional blue color to it. And also with earth tones, it seems like it's quite limited as well. So I might want to add an additional earth tone. Creating a color chart can be quite tedious and time consuming. Another good way to test out your colors is to create a color wheel. So here I have is a color wheel with three primary colors added. Primary yellow, French vermilion, and scenarios blue. So I'm going to add some red to the yellow. 
I'm going to add a tiny bit of red to the yellow because red is a stronger color compared to yellow. So with a bit of red, we have a color that's something like this. And it does seem that this color, the red color is not that transparent. Let me add a bit more red to the mixture. So this is rather warm, almost too much red. And now let's add some blue to the yellow to see what we have. Let's add a bit more blue. And finally, let's add the blue and the red together. This is a tiny bit of red. Now this purple is not very bright, it's not very vibrant. Let me add a bit more red and see what happens. So these are the colors that I can get with the three primary colors. And now I'm adding ultramarine here because I want to see what colors I can get with ultramarine, with this yellow and with this red. When we mix colors, we want to achieve vibrant mixtures, colors that are bright and clean. So for example, with primary yellow and this red here, we have an orange. This is the orange you can get from the yellow and red in this particular box set. And this is what I would consider a rather bright orange. It's very clearly orange and that's a good thing. Some orange can be a bit dull, for example, this orange was mixed with a muted yellow and a bright red so the muted yellow makes this orange a bit dull this orange is mixed with new gumbosh which is a very warm yellow so this orange here is actually brighter compared to this for the greens we have yellow green and blue green both are mixed with scenarius blue or phthalo blue for muted greens, we have French ultramarine for mixing, so these two are a bit more subdued. And here's a comparison between the two greens from the pans and the mixed greens. I personally prefer the mixed greens because they have a bit more characteristics because sometimes you can see the individual colors that are used to mix, but for greens like this, they are mixed very completely. The wash is very flat and there is no variations of colors within the wash itself. But here, if you add a bit more blue, if you do not mix the colors very cleanly, you can see the individual colors and that is quite nice. For purple, I can see that it's a bit difficult to get a bright purple with either Scenarius Blue or French Ultramarine. So with this cool blue color, I get very muted purples. With ultramarine, this purple it looks nice, but it's a bit dulled down. To mix a bright and vibrant purple, ideally you should use a warm blue and a cool red. So this particular palette does not have a cool red. So in order to make this palette a bit more versatile, you can add a cool red to it. and. Let me show you one example. The cool red that I'm going to use is Permanent Rose from Mission Go. So let me mix that on the paper and you can see the purple that I can get. Now that this has dried, let's compare the purples. So with French Ultramarine and Permanent Rose, the pigment code is PV19. We have this bright and vibrant purple. But with French Ultramarine and this warm red, which is French Vermilion, we have a muted purple like this. So when we compare them side by side, it's very clear that this is more vibrant. This is a bit dull, a bit muted. Burnt Umber and Pins Grey. Burnt Umber and Pins Grey are considered convenient colors because you can use them to mix grey tones very easily. This burnt umber is a bit weak though. I need to really get the pigment onto the brush to get a dark color. So when we add French ultramarine to it, we can get a nice gray tone. If you add more brown to it, it will be warmer. If you add more ultramarine to it, it will be cooler. Remember, you can charge in extra colors to make the wash a bit more interesting. 
So see this section here, which is mixed very completely. It's very difficult to tell the colors that are used to create this wash. But here, you can see some blue in it. So um, this is definitely more interesting compared to this side. Sennelier's Ultramarine has very fine granulation. So you can see some texture, but it's not as obvious compared to other brands. Depending on the subject you want to paint, sometimes you may want to use a blue that is not granulating but still looks like ultramarine. So that's when you need to add additional colors to your palette. And lastly, we have Paints Gray. So this color is made out of three pigments, PV19, PB15, colon 1, and PBK7. This is a very quick way to get black because you can use a lot of paint and you can get a very dark shade of black. But this is not as interesting as a black that you can mix from primary colors. So when you get a new watercolor set, I would suggest you create some color swatches, color wheels and maybe a color chart to see the possibilities to see what kind of colors you can get from that limited set of colors that you have. You can also see the limitations of your color palette. For example, with this set of eight colors, the limitation would be its ability to create vibrant purples. So now that you have created the color chart, you will know that you need to get additional colors in order to get the vibrant purple mix. When it comes to choosing other colors that I would add to my existing color palette, I usually choose colors that I use frequently. For example, green, is a color that I use very frequently so I have green in my color palette. I know I can mix green from yellow and blue but because I have green in my color palette it saves me a lot of time from mixing with yellow and blue. Other colors that I would add would be colors that are very difficult to mix with existing colors. For example, if I want to have a cool red if I do not have a cool rate in this palette and I want to mix a cool rate, it would be impossible to do that. So I need to add the cool rate. Or if I need a color that is very similar to phthalo green, phthalo green is a very bright, very strong color. I can mix a lemon yellow with phthalo blue, but the color is slightly different from phthalo green. So I may choose phthalo green for that reason. That's all for today's video. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. And be sure to check out the video description for more links related to watercolor mixing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.